You might have heard these words pop up on the internet, artificial intelligence, deep learning, but what do these terms actually mean and how have they become so cool? That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video and let's get started. Hey there, my name's Jake and machines now are able to classify images, understand raw audio, generate audio, generate text or even detect what's in an image. Everything at a level greater than 95%. Now what's behind this amazing result? Well, they all work on something called a neural network. Uh, it's a machine learning algorithm and when this neural network not just has one or two but many layers, it's called deep learning. So the first neural network was created by Frank Rosenblatt. He called it the Perceptron, and it was a two-layer network. And no, after a decade, nobody really talked about Perceptrons because um, other machine learning models like SVM were much better. And after many years, a uh, computer scientist named Jeffrey Hinton envisioned that neural networks would work really well if given more data and if the layers in these neural networks are increased but there was not much computational power available to support the increase in these layers because each layer computes matrix multiplications in the last few years due to the rise of computational power we've been able to compute these heavy networks and due to the rise of internet we've been able to gather more data and uh, the vision that Jeffrey had for neural networks is now a reality. Not only did these neural networks work really well on structured data where you have well-defined features, uh, for example, if you want to predict someone's net worth, you have factors that affect net worth, right? Like age, a job, country. That's, that's, that's for structured data, and we've been using machine learning in the past uh, for mainly structured data. Uh, these neural networks have also excelled at unstructured data where you don't have well-defined features. Uh, for example, images, uh, text and audio uh, where you don't have well-defined features. Uh, for images you just have uh, pixel values and neural networks have been able to learn from it. Other media can make it seem like AI is really powerful and can take away our jobs. This is not the reality and we're really far away from that stage. Uh, instead of what the current AI is basically a neural network or a machine learning model and we give it examples uh, in the form of data and it's going to learn from it. So that's, that's, that's the current state of AI. I've talked about layers and how they affect neural network performance. Uh, but now I want to talk about what goes on in these layers and how you can solve a machine learning problem with neural networks. So the first step in doing that is to make the data lift, make the data, make the data lift, make the data lift, learn from it. So we want to be able to perform mathematical calculations on our input data. Uh, so we need it in the form of numbers, right? For images, this might be its pixel values, and for text, this might be a one-hot vector where there are fixed positions for words. If you want to represent a word, uh, the fixed position is one, the value of the fixed position is one, and the rest of it is zero. There are many things you can do to your data to make your model run efficiently, like normalization, but I'm not going to, talk, I'm not going to be talking about it in this video. So let's do the step two. times wait, it's a matrix of nums. Add a bias So this is how a neural network looks like uh, with one hidden layer. And uh, you can really adjust the number of nodes that you have in this layer and you can also increase the number of hidden uh, layers. And a hidden layer is basically the layer in between the input layer and the output layer. So the operations that take place in uh, a neural network start from X where 
X is a matrix, uh, and, and a matrix is just a group of numbers where where the rows correspond to the examples that your model learns from, and the columns uh, represent the features, right? For example, I have this humongous data set, uh, and uh, you can see that the rows are a bunch of examples, right? You, we have a bunch of examples, and the rows uh, represent uh, examples, and and the columns represent the features, right? Like age, work class, these are all features, right? So you take a bunch of features, uh, well, you take some features, and you take a bunch of examples, uh, collect, collect a bunch of examples, and then you feed it to your uh, neural network to predict uh, this thing right here. This is your output. In this case, in this example, I mean in this data set, the output that you're trying to predict is your income. So uh, once you have your uh, x, uh, what you do is you matrix multiply it with uh, these lines right here, and these lines represent uh, weights. Uh, by the way, uh, the number of nodes here are the number of features. So in this case, in this example, in this data set, you have 13 features, but here it's, it's only 3 because it has 3, um, and yeah, and the output is just 1 in here. So that's your, uh, alright, that's what I wanted to mention, but uh, you have your matrix multiplication between your X and, and your first set of weights that connect, connect uh, your input layer to your hidden layer. And, uh, you, and then what you do is you have your hidden layer, and then if you, for example, if you have another hidden layer, what, what you do is you take the output which you got over here by matrix multiplying X and uh, W um, and you pass it to the second hidden layer so it would look kind of like like this, right? Hidden layer two. Hidden layer, and you have another set of weights. By the way, this, all right. all right. So this is how it would look like if you have two hidden layers. All right. So basically, what what happens is you multiply. Uh, you get your input. You matrix multiply it, and then pass it to another hidden layer. Uh, and then that hidden layer computes the thing and uh, then it will go to the output layer and so there's another thing that you add to it which is called a bias term and uh, yeah so you matrix multiply between this and that is what takes place in a neural network uh, matrix multiplication plus your bias, which is your new activation function. Now, activation function, why do we use it? Well, to increase the non-linearity of your model. Uh, so if you want your model to uh, learn complex functions and want to fit, uh, fit the data more accurately, uh, so, uh, so a linear function is just basically a line and a curve is is better and every time more accurate. I've mentioned that weights are completely random and uh, they are optimized over time and that's how uh, the neural network learns and there's a name for it, it's called gradient descent. I found this video helpful and if you did, hit the like button and if you want to see more of these videos, subscribe. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you in the next video and shoo.